Okay, so I again talked too much, and I guess I talked a little bit too fast. M Mona, thank you once again. And uh, we have, uh, I'm, I have to apologize, I think, to our last speaker <laughs> for, for um, uh, really talking too much, um, Dr. Uh, Laura Marinoni from Italy. Uh, so this is, um, uh, I have to say about this paper, something very, um, I think, important. This is maybe like a pioneering study. I think the first one which really uh, pointed out that aquaphotomics can be used uh, for, uh, unfortunately, the, the reviewers asked us to, mon to change the um, uh, title a little bit. But this is about uh, est uh, using aquaphotomics for estimating the shelf life, for monitoring the shelf life. So um, I hope you will all now pay attention because this is really important study and I'm very, very uh, grateful to Professor Cataneo and to her um, team of really excellent uh, colleagues who accepted to, to work on this paper and who uh, accepted to give a lecture on this. So, uh, Dr. Marinoni, please. <laughs> Good morning. This work was focused on the use of aquaphotomic in nose and electrolyte leakage to monitor the quality changes during the storage of ready-to-eat rocket. The consumption of ready-to-eat leafy vegetables has increased rapidly due to changes that have occurred in the dietary pattern of the consumer. Ready-to-eat products are perceived as natural, fresh, convenient, high-quality and health-promoting. Among the ready-to-eat products, rocket salad is one of the most consumed, either alone or mixed with other vegetables. It belongs to the Brassicaceae family, and for this reason, it is a source of compounds with biological activity beneficial for human health, such as glucosinolates, precursors of isothiocyanates. Like most leafy vegetables, rocket leaves have a very high metabolic activity, which limit their shelf life. During storage, the high respiration rate and ethylene production lead to leaf yellowing, loss of turgidity, of flavor development, and general deterioration. Modified atmosphere packaging is effective in prolonging the shelf life of fresh cut produces by modifying the ratios between gases within the packaging. Low oxygen and high carbon dioxide levels cause a decrease in respiration, inhibit the growth of post-harvest pathogens, and slow down the deterioration rate. However, very low levels of oxygen may induce anaerobic fermentation with the accumulation of unpleasant odors, undesirable tastes, and tissue damage. Several techniques are used to monitor the quality of fresh cut fruit and vegetables during shelf life. Among them, the electrolyte leakage test measures the cell membrane permeability, resulting in an index of leaf damage. Among the non-destructive techniques, the electronic nose is a fast and reliable method to evaluate the volatile fingerprint in the headspace of food. Near-infrared spectroscopy, in combination with chemometrics and aquaphotomics, represents a powerful, rapid and non-destructive analytical tool to monitor the quality of packaged foods by evaluating the changes occurring during the storage. Aquaphotomics approach exploits the fact that changes in the water matrix reflect like a mirror the molecules the water surrounds. This work aims to evaluate and monitor the changes occurring during the storage of ready-to-eat rocket salad packed under modified atmospheres. The electrolyte leakage test and rapid and non-destructive techniques such as NIR spectroscopy coupled to aquaphotomics and a portable electronic nose were employed. Two experimentations were carried out at the Research Center for Engineering and Agrofood Processing of the Council of Agricultural Research and Economics in Milan. Trial 1 was carried out in spring on first cut rocket. Trial 2 was carried out on second cut autumn rocket. 
freshly cut rocket salad was packed in plastic bags under three modified atmospheres listed below and stored for 13 days at 4 degrees. Immediately after packaging and after 1, 4, 7, 11 and 13 days of storage, the following analyses were performed. The electronic nose analysis was performed to evaluate the evolution of the volatile compounds profile during storage. The instrument is based on a sensor array of 10 MOS type chemical sensors. The electrolyte leakage test was used to measure the index of leaf damage. The near infrared spectroscopy analysis was used to study the changes in the water absorption profile in the range of the aquaphotonics. NIR analysis was performed in reflectance mode on intact salad bags in the spectral range between 900 and 1600 nanometers. 60 spectra for each treatment were acquired. Spectra were processed to build a PCA and a PLS model for the prediction of the index of leaf damage. Spectra were also pretreated according to Professor Tsenkova to build the app. Programs. Observing the inos sensors profiles, a great influence of three broad range sensors was found. These sensors are mainly sensitive towards a wide range of compounds, but they also possess some selectivity towards methane and alcohols. Samples A and B showed lower sensor values than treatment C. Regarding the nose sensor trends, for both trials, treatment A and B showed low sensor values and comparable trends. Treatment C showed very high values at the last checkpoints, indicating a possible accumulation of compounds such as methane and alcohols in the package atmosphere. Regarding the electrolyte leakage test, in the trial 1, the index of leaf damage remained quite constant in all treatments until day 4. At day 7, it increased significantly only in C treatment. Treatments A and B showed lower values than treatment C until the end of the storage. In the trial 2, all the treatments showed an index of leaf damage values far higher than in the first trial. C treatment showed again the worst performance, indicating that a modified atmosphere packaging enriched with carbon dioxide can negatively affect rocket leaves, inducing faster deterioration. NIR raw spectra showed broad and overlapped bands related to water absorptions, as shown in the picture. NIR spectra can be affected by difference in vegetable surface, thickness and structure, and by the growing season, which in turn influences the chemical physical characteristics of the leaves. In order to build the aquagrams, a wavelength selection was made through different approaches, from the normalized transform spectra, according to Professor Tsenkova, from the PCA loadings plot, and from the loadings of the PLS model for the prediction of the index of leaf damage. Based on this selection, 12 wavelengths inside the water matrix coordinates ranges were selected for the construction of aquagrams. By observing the aquagrams of the trial 1, treatments A and C showed a shift from left to right up to the first day, then the graph went back to the left. For the treatment B, the inversion occurred on the seventh day. There was a prevalence of hydrogen-bonded water species and strongly bound water in the freshly cut rocket. With the progress of the storage, free water or weakly hydrogen-bonded water prevails. And this point could indicate the loss of freshness of the product. This suggested that treatment B was the best at preserving the freshness of rocket salad, in agreement with the Eno's findings. Trial 2 show different profiles compared to trial 1. For treatments A and B, 
fresh samples were very different from stored samples. Stored samples were almost overlapped, suggesting that the major changes in water occurred immediately after packaging. Treatment C showed different profiles for the various sampling days. The presence of plant material with different physiological and metabolic characteristics might have affected the hydration state of the store product and consequently the apogram trends. In nose and the index of leaf damage results agreed in identifying the bee atmosphere as the best for maintaining the freshness of ready to eat rocket salad in both trails. According to Inos results, the A and B atmosphere confirmed the plausible positive and active role of oxygen concentration in maintaining the freshness of ready-to-eat rocket and minimizing the occurrence of anaerobic fermentation. Similarly, index of leaf damage suggested that in the sea atmosphere, the cell membrane underwent more degradation and damage than in the other treatments. The aquagram proved to be a promising tool for detecting changes in the water structure during storage in atmospheres with different gaseous compositions. Although the data are very preliminary, the good agreement between the NIR spectra and the index of leaf damage data makes NIR spectroscopy a promising technique for non-destructively evaluating the damage status of the plant membrane of the ready-to-eat rocket salad during the shelf life. NIR, coupled with aquaphotomics, should be investigated more in depth to determine the role of water and interactions with plant tissues during shelf life in order to confirm these preliminary results. Some other destructive parameters, such as consistency, fluorescence, ripening index, are under evaluation to confirm these results obtained using mainly rapid and non-destructive techniques. This research was funded by the Italian Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Forestry Policies within the AgriDigit program. The authors are also very grateful to Tsukino Shizuku Foundation and the chairperson Tomoko Matahari Miula for their financial support for the publication and thank you all for the attention. And thank you, Dr. Marinoni, for this lecture and for preparing in advance this, uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, we have one question, uh, actually a comment in, in the chat box by Pierre. Uh, he said that he would be curious to see the results when supplementing the methods with a biophotonics approach as used by Professor Spordino's group in Catania. Oh, maybe you know oh, uh, what he's talking about. I don't know what's bi biophotonics approach. So, um, yeah, for a start, can you just uh, first explain to Dr. Marinoni what do you mean and she can maybe comment? Um, sure, no problem. So, thank you for this this introduction to um, the research of aging in senescence. I mean, what, what we see in, in the, what we saw actually with Tolton's presentation, also the dynamics of rootlets growing from the seeds in, this, in the same manner we can also observe the reversing so in the aging process and the, the process of decomposition when the ecosystem within the box changes in a way that starts to decompose the food that's contained in it and in this way by supplementing the, the separate investigations that we have but using a photo -multi multiplier tube that helps us to determine the electromagnetic radiation in the visible. That's, that helps us to, to study the emissions in the visible range. This could be an additional, let's say, spectral tool in order to determine when the dramatic change has happened. Because any loss or increase in photonic emission is an indicator that something dramatic happens. And this should mm -hmm. be then seen also in the programs. Mm -hmm. And the laboratory in Sicily, it's operated by the Instituto Nazionale di Fisica Nucleare, INFN, which is able to do this in real time. So Agatha Scordino actually does have the infrastructure. Unfortunately, Franco Musumeci is no longer there, but he will be definitely available to complement the study and this investigation. 
Oh, thank you very much for the suggestion. Um, no, no we don't know this, uh, this research group, but it will be very interesting uh, uh, to evaluate uh, this uh, approach, this I, combination approach. If you want, I can send you the link. In, um, I will place it in the chat box so you can see what they have done so far. Oh, yes, please. Thank you very okay, much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, can I ask? Yes, please. Um, yes, just, I have a question about um, it, in the spectra that you have acquired, I guess there's a lot of information and we have published um, quite many papers on plants. Um, have you tried to connect these results, your results, to what we have seen in different we have investigated biotic stress uh, in plants, abiotic stress in plants at lower temperature, for example, um, the dehydration. So um, I think these papers could be very, very useful. And I wonder if you, if you do you continue your research, maybe in the future, this, this could be very, very useful for, um, because you have a reference data, a rich reference data, that could explain and um, could be described in, as um, in interaction with what you have in the spectra. Um, I think you have a very rich spectral data. Yeah, yes, um, sure, this is a very preliminary study and uh, we have planned to uh, repeat uh, the experimentation with the rocket salad and surely we, uh, we will go more in depth also with your, uh, your work. We, we are working a lot with uh, human data and I've been yeah. wondering about the shelf life. <laughs> <laughs> it could be interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, you have the key. You have the key, so you can answer the question, I'm sure. <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> one day. <laughs> looking forward to your results and your papers in the future. I really will follow up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck. Okay. I, I liked, uh, I, I noticed actually the consistency between your paper and our paper, well, not about um, plants uh, and the stress, but with the water activity paper. Uh, we had a one paper about monitoring with the also <laughs> Italian group, but uh, from uh, by Cristina Malegori from DIFAR uh, in Genoa. Mm -hmm. So we worked on uh, monitoring of rice germ, and I really liked how you have uh, in your algorithms the same bands which were related to the storage monitoring of this other completely, I mean, it is different. It is a uh, even process thing, um, but yet we have the same band. So that I think can uh, lead to, uh, you know, like maybe eventually in the future, uh, using the same bands to monitoring, to monitor the shelf life or us. <laughs> so we would know <laughs> when to react. I really like this paper and this is really pioneering. I, I hope that you will continue in, in this direction. Uh, every time, I love one study of uh, also from uh, I cited I think maybe every day <laughs> from uh, about um, it was about acrophotomics about the connection with apple texture uh, texture of apps, uh, apples and I liked here that you had a nice references uh, well uh, reviewers for example in this paper required all I don't know possible things that you could measure maybe uh, using these destructive techniques and so on. But uh, just a little bit like this can uh, work a very, very, very well in combination with aquaphotonics, aquaphotonics to explain what is actually happening. The, the, does the leaf become softer or is it uh, drier and so on? So this is very valuable. I love all the papers actually coming from Crea in Italy. Very, very <laughs> valuable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Are there, I'm, I'm again talking too much. Are there any uh, questions from the audience? Aha, uh -huh, again, uh, will the presentation in PDF be archived and uh, available? Uh, so, okay, this is um, uh, all the, this is going to, the webinar uh, the, is going to be, of course, uploaded to our Aquaphotomics YouTube channel and all the papers, um, Ah, but you want you want the presentation. Maybe uh, Dr. Marinone, you can give uh, a presentation directly to to Pierre. Yeah, sure. 
Yes. So no Peter, problem. just be in contact then with um, Dr. Marinoni to to if you want the presentation. All the papers that were presented today are available. Uh, they they can all be um, downloaded. Uh, they're uh, free of charge. So here is the link in the chat box. These uh, four papers that are speakers presented today and um, fourteen more because we, uh, there are currently 18 published uh, paper in our papers in our special issue. And there, I think, even more uh, uh, four or five papers are still in the reviewing process and uh, proof stage and so on. So there will be more papers coming. Um, so let's see uh, any more questions uh, from the audience about the last topic. Mm, can I see any? No. Ah, Flora or Balkis, we were working a lot on, on um, preservation. Do you have any questions for last speaker? No? Well, I know that Flora is a little bit shy, <laughs> but she did, uh, uh, and we used the, again, this, um, uh, the, the, your last paper was very, very inspiring. We did with Flora uh lettuce uh storage of lettuce so it's very simple to write it down like flora um uh, any good, questions good afternoon everyone in, in japan uh yes actually while we were preparing for this lettuce paper also i'm not sure about the authors but uh, we also read paper related to aquaphotomics and uh, rackets i think it was somehow not, related not well that this is this is this paper this is this paper Yes, yes. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> yes, you have an in person as paper. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Any other, any other people? Flora, it is very nice to see you. And we finished the latest paper. We just still didn't submit it. We just didn't find time. I'm so yeah, sorry. I'm very happy to hear that. Just let me know if I can help you with anything. Anymore. No, it's. Uh, yeah. We only need to read it one more time and submit. That's all. <laughs> it takes a little bit time. All right, then. Uh, well, I think uh, we, yes, we are uh, extended this webinar half an hour more than, than, than we uh, planned. But I first want to say thank you to our speakers today. I really love and enjoyed all the presentations. I hope uh, other people, I think all the other people actually um, enjoyed as well. Today we had a really large audience and uh, which testifies that this, these papers are covering the topics which are of um, high importance, not only from the, uh, uh, from the practical aspect, because all these um, are very practical questions. However, uh, all the studies contributed a lot uh, to our uh, fundamental understanding of what we can do with these uh, water-light interactions. Um, I want to ask, actually uh, say thank you a lot to speakers that, uh, who, uh, who made these videos available in advance so we could provide uh, some translation. I know it is not perfect, but uh, we are doing the best we can with the resources that we currently have. And we will improve the translations until the um, conference in, in November, where for the second time the Japanese audience can uh, see all this, all this presentation. So thank you, speakers. I know that we are all, you know, like very busy. And thank you for taking the time to to do this for us. Of course, a thank you a lot to Tomoko San from um, Tsukino Shizuku Foundation and to Tsukino Shizuku Foundation and all the people who, mm, well, many of them just stay anonymous, but there are many, many Japanese people and Japanese companies who donated. Uh, to you know, like, um, to support this this research, and I want to thank to all these people who who um, see the importance of the research that we are doing, and that they are willing to do something to improve the the world in in, in which we live. So, Tomoko-san, do you have any comments for today's meeting? Hi. 
How Thank do you, you. say um, <laughs> What do you say? Well, because um, I am not a scientist, uh, so I have um, maybe like a 1% of understanding of all the presentation today. So um, we'll have uh, uh, support from Professor Chenkova and also Mr. Um, uh, Shigeoka, the UNOSATO president, um, in November to see, uh, because one of our um, mission is to translate the science language into general wow. public language and so hopefully we could accomplish that in november uh, so well thank you so much uh for all the, the hard work and um the energy that is, um, everyone is putting into this uh research and findings and sharing this wisdom with the uh, world and i really and we really really truly appreciate that and we really fascinated to share that wisdom with everyone. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you, um, um, Tomoko. Um, I, I want to use this um, opportunity to thank the individual um, contributors to um, the whole aquaphotomics um, uh, movement and, and science. And um, I really appreciate the, um, the interest that they have into water and the science related to aquaphotomics and the water and um, for warm-hearted support of um, um, each individual and, and you being um, in the foundation, being um, uh, transforming the knowledge to um, understandable language. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Well then, I guess for tonight, this is it. Uh, so stay and monitor your emails, stay with us, uh, monitor your emails. We will soon announce, maybe in two weeks, the, the next webinar. Uh, the webinar will, ah, sorry. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, please stay for just a few more seconds and uh, uh, fill in the poll. We are interested in what you, want, what you think about this webinar and what can we do in the future so please just uh take some time to answer quickly this um these questions it's just a simple choice uh questions and answers um so the next harvest webinar we will uh have more uh, the, the topics which are let's say um probably the people will think that they're more exotic for example, we will have a lecture which shows that using a non-polarized light and polarized light actually gives you different accuracy of prediction of some uh, very basic quantitative properties we're interested in. So this tells you a lot about the interaction of light and, and water. So uh, that's the topic for our next webinar. And we will have uh, uh, the next webinar a uh, beautiful uh, theoretical lecture about the role of waters in uh, in um, forming of the membranes and reconsidering what membrane actually is. That is the second lecture uh, and um, we are, I'm still hoping uh, maybe from um, University of Innsbruck we will have a lecture about the water in polymer matrices, which is very important for, for example, uh, many of the um, uh, materials that we use in medicine, uh, like contact lenses or um, other types of, of um, uh, materials like that. And finally, we will have one very, very interesting study, which, uh, which is a pilot study in uh, using aquatomics to monitor whether the blood is purified or not. So uh, all the topics are very, very, I think, interesting. And um, uh, I hope you will join us. Uh, stay in touch. We will uh, notify you about all this very, very soon. Uh, OK, well, then, I guess. I'm always very sorry, and I don't know how to finish the webinar. I enjoyed it, and thank you all. Uh, it was a pleasure to host this webinar and to attend and, and listen to all, all these lectures and to have such a nice audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you in maybe November. Bye. End of the talk. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Good night, Japan. Good night. <laughs> Let's get some of this.
Lots of those. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Afternoon. Arigato gozaimasu. Благодарям много. Арикато. Скоро довиждаме. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Arigato. Bye. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Oh, gozaimasu. Hi, arigato. Skare Hiromi-san, where are you from? <laughs> Tokyo. From Tokyo. Nice yes. to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Body, mind. What is that? Unerice. Interesting. Radom se step da te vida. Имах лекция до, до 12 и се включих малко по-късно. Много хубаво, че го направи. Жива здрава. Ами, скоро да убива. Много работа не може да се стигне главата. Аригато, отказвай. Мата джейча, аз я разкъм нега и ще вас. Я разкъм нега и ще вас. Ес ми на сай. Ой, аз съм и...